Commissioners, the proposed landmark was calendared and heard as the Conference House Park archeological site. And as we mentioned at both of those meetings, the staff has been working with the city's federally recognized tribes on a landmark name that reflects the significance of the site to Native American history and what this designation is about. As a result, we propose that the name of the landmark um, be changed to Akawahang Manahanang, Island Protected from the Wind Archaeological Site. Sorry. Okay. And we'll be referring to it by that name during this presentation and in the designation report. The name Akawahang Manahanan, which translates to island protected from the wind, is derived from the old Muncie language name for Staten Island, which historic documents suggest may have also applied to this particular site, located at the southern end of Staten Island in Tottenville. The Akawahang Manahanong Island Protected from the Wind archeological site is associated with over 8,000 years of occupation by indigenous peoples and contains the region's largest known cultural complex. It is the best preserved known archeological site associated with an indigenous presence in New York City. It's proposed as the city's first landmark specifically recognizing the many generations of indigenous peoples who lived here designation would protect the sites below ground archeological resources. At the public hearing on May 18th, five people spoke in support of the proposed designation, including representatives of the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation, the Delaware Tribe of Indians, the Professional Archeologists of New York City, Historic Districts Council, and the Society for the Architecture of the City. There was no testimony uh, in opposition to the proposed designation. And in addition, the commission received eight letters of support, including from the Stockbridge Muncie Community Tribal Historic Preservation Office, the Society for American Archaeology, the New York Archaeological Council, the New York Landmarks Conservancy, Historic House Trust, the Conference House Association, and two individuals. Shown here in red, the proposed landmark site includes approximately 20 acres of highly archeologically sensitive land located within the city's Conference House Park. There are two designated New York City landmarks located directly north of the proposed landmark site, Conference House, which gives the park its name, and the Henry Hogg Biddle House. Indigenous peoples have lived in what is now New York City for thousands of years. As indicated on this timeline, indigenous peoples were present within the proposed landmark site for over 8,000 years. One of the earliest sites discovered on the East Coast was in Staten Island, about three miles to the north of the proposed landmark site. Their artifacts were found dating to about 13,000 years ago. In this earliest period, the geography and ecology of the area were very different. People only stayed in places for brief periods of time as they focused on hunting big game like mastodon. Over the next millennia, the area evolved to become a place with abundant and varied resources, including nut-bearing trees, fish, and shellfish like oysters, and smaller game like deer and turkeys. The Lenape began to stay in places for longer and in the woodland period, beginning about 1500 years ago, villages were built as local resources were utilized to support more people for longer lengths of time. Archeology span can and has shed light on what life was like for the people who lived in this area over this long period of time. The proposed landmark site was visited and utilized for thousands of years. Today, it overlooks the confluence of Arthur Kill and the mouth of the Raritan River, an important estuary that significantly shaped the area's ecosystem. Indigenous people certainly relied on the area's abundant resources that surrounded the site, including ample oysters, fish, and game. In the woodland period, a village was likely at this site, as well as a cultural complex. The people who lived here were Lenape and spoke Munsi. We are not certain of the name of this village or how many generations of people lived here, but at least in the 17th century, the village may have been called Akawaham Manahanang, which was also used as the name for Staten Island. It has been translated as island protected from the wind by the linguists consulted by the Delaware tribe of Indians that we worked with. 
Um, this Dutch map from 1636 shows the locations of many indigenous villages at that time. None are shown on Staten Island, but that is likely a reflection of the ignorance of the map maker. Archaeology has provided information about the proposed landmark site's long occupation. Over 19 archaeological projects have occurred in the vicinity of the proposed landmark site since the 19th century, including work by the American Museum of Natural History in the late 19th century. These projects uncovered an important cultural complex that was used over a long period of time. In addition, over 100 archaeological features primarily associated with the Woodland Era settlement were uncovered. The archaeologists also uncovered a series of hearths and other artifacts from the early archaic period about 8,000 years ago, confirming that cooking, butchering, and tool making were among the activities that occurred at the site. The site still contains archaeological resources, including the shell midden shown here on the right. The close-up view on the left is provided for reference um, from a different site. Shell middens are collections of discarded shells, usually oyster, that sometimes include other types of food waste, tools, and on occasion, culturally sensitive materials, and provide further indication of the long use of the site by indigenous people. A series of wars erupted in the 1640s and 1650s as Europeans violently colonized land on Staten Island. In 1670, the British drafted a land deed that involved several signatories of indigenous peoples who were Lenape and spoke Munsi. While Europeans viewed contracts such as this as a purchase agreement, scholars have noted that at this time the Munsi did not perceive them in the same way, understanding them more as temporary tenancies. We don't know when the last indigenous people left the area, but there is little archeological evidence of an indigenous presence in the vicinity of the landmark site after the mid 1670s indicating that by that time, the expanding British settlement had largely succeeded in forcing out the population of indigenous peoples here. In 1676, Christopher Billop received a land patent from the crown for more than a thousand acres. It included the proposed landmark site, as well as the land to the north on which he built Conference House, named for an unsuccessful peace conference held there during the Revolutionary War. The Henry Hogg Biddle House, built circa 1853 by a wealthy real estate developer, is located just north of Conference House. Photos of these two designated landmarks are shown on this slide. After Samuel Ward purchased nearly 400 acres of land in the area, it became known as Ward's Point. And although it was surveyed and laid out in the 1870s, it remained largely undeveloped, as is evident in the 1907 Robinson map on the right. A few streets in the area were paved prior to the 1920s, and the curbs, street lamps, and trees that line these streets remain visible in some places within the landmark site. The proposed landmark contains significant historic era archeological resources, including evidence from the period of contact between indigenous people and European colonists and the colonial period. For example, projectile points made of copper and brass have been found at the site. These metals became available once Europeans began to trade with the indigenous peoples. And so finding evidence of such points is considered a key indicator that the site was used in the contact period. This image is a Dutch depiction of their encounter with the indigenous people drawn in 1651. In 1926, Conference House their encounter with the indigenous people drawn in 1651. In 1926, Conference House Park was donated to the city of New York and today it remains under the ownership of the Department of Parks and Recreation. The modern park includes paths like the one shown here on the right, hiking and biking trails and a visitor center. Woodlands and beach comprise the remainder of the site. A the photo on the left was taken recently when members of the tribal nations joined a few of our staff to visit the proposed landmark site. The proposed landmark would be New York City's first to formally and specifically acknowledge and recognize the thousands of years of indigenous occupation and settlement in the area. As a New York City park, the site has long been protected and cared for by the city's Department of Parks and Recreation. 
After designation, LPC would review all projects within the proposed landmark site with the potential to impact archeological resources. Commissioners, as was discussed at the public hearing, this is a coastal shoreline site and there are resiliency issues here related to rising sea levels and stormwater runoff that are exacerbated by climate change. Projects are underway in the vicinity of the proposed landmark site to help mitigate the effects of climate change. It is likely there will be further challenges in the future that will need to be addressed here to protect the site and preserve its significant archeological resources. <clears throat> this map shows the proposed landmark site very closely corresponds to the boundaries of the National Historic Landmark outlined in green, which was established in 1993 as the Wards Point Archeological Site to preserve its archeological resources. The area is also listed in the National Register of Historic Places as the Wards Point Conservation Area, which encompasses the proposed landmark site. And LPC's research for this proposed landmark site involved collaborative engagement with the city's federally recognized tribes. And we met several times with the tribal historic preservation officers representing the Delaware Tribe of Indians, the Delaware Nation, and the Stockbridge Muncie Community Band of Mohicans. They provided meaningful input and guidance regarding resources, preferred terminology, and the landmark name, which now better reflects its indigenous significance. The designation report reflects their input and we are very grateful for their crucial guidance. Designation of the Akawahang Manahanang Island Protected from the Wind archeological site would protect and preserve the largest and best documented known site associated with thousands of years of indigenous habitation in New York City. The archeology span and research departments have collaborated on this project and Amanda Sutphin, Director of Archaeology, and Mary Nell Norwin Wheatley are here with me for any questions. And Margaret Herman has been involved in both of these designations this morning as well. Um, staff recommends that the commission vote to designate the Akawahang Munahanang Island Protected from the Wind archaeological site as an individual New York City landmark. Thank you. One. Commissioner Gustafson, would you make the motion? Certainly. I move that the Landmarks Preservation Commission designate the Akawahung Menahanung Island Protected from the Wind Archaeological Site, Conference House Park, 298 Satterley Street, also known as 298 to 300 Satterley Street, Borough of Staten Island, as a New York City landmark because of its special character and special historical and aesthetic interest and value as part of the de development, heritage, and cultural characteristics of the city, state, and nation, as set forth in the designation report for LP 2648, dated June 22nd, 2021. I also move that Borough of Staten Island tax map block 7857 lot one in part be designated as its landmark site as described in the designation report and illustrated in the attached map. Thank you. And Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second. Thank you. And Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. Commissioner Holford Smith. Aye. With 10 in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. Terrific. Thank you so much. Our newest individual landmark uh, and our uh, you know, wonderful, inclusive um, representation today in both designations. I'm just, I'm so pleased with both. And then again, I want to thank as always for her rigor and leadership in the research department and um, you know really delighted that we're able to recognize the full history of New York City through these designations. So thank you all and thank you commissioners for your support.